Zeal Brothers here. I want to talk about 10 problems with the modern pastor. I'm not talking about a pastor just in general, but a modern pastor. Now, when I talk about modern pastors, I'm talking about it in the sense of pastors who are, how shall I say, in touch with these times. They teach a little bit differently than they used to in the past. They are ones who are sensitive to the issues of the day and they have been changed by those issues. So when you talk about a modern pastor, then there's a traditional pastor. A traditional pastor will be one who is still holding to the traditions of the church. So a modern pastor or new pastors or recent pastors, they face a little bit different issues. And I found 10 problems with them. The first one is this. One of the problems of modern pastors is that they inwardly lack confidence. Or another way of putting it is, and this is just a, a flipping it around, a lot of them have anxiety issues. You may not know this, but a lot of pastors lack confidence and they are constantly seeking validation from congregations. And that's bad. That's one reason why I always talk about the church as simping, right? What is simping? Somebody who simps is a man who goes after a woman and the only way he knows how to appeal to her is to kiss her butt. Right. He can only say positive things about her. he can never say nothing negative. He's constantly seeking her validation. And so he loses all power in a relationship. Well, that's what a lot of leaders do in the church. Right. A lot of pastors do this. They are simping. They lack confidence. So they're constantly looking for validation. And because of that, they cannot lead. Here's a second problem with a modern pastor. Too knowledge focused. If you look at the pastorate in general, there are spiritual gifts, right? And we talk about those spiritual gifts. You can look at them and you can see them in a passage like 1 Corinthians 10. I mean, 1 Corinthians 12. I'm sorry. I'm way off. 1 Corinthians 12. And in 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about different gifts. And a lot of pastors, the pastorate in general is too knowledge heavy. Now, what does knowledge do for you? Knowledge will get you an understanding of God's word. But then... It will be nice, right? Because we have a seminary based system, people who can make it through that scholarly material are more likely to be pastors. But what about the wisdom based pastors? You might say, well, Brian, it doesn't appear to be a lot of wisdom based pastors. Well, what about somebody like Moses? Right now, Moses was very knowledgeable and I get it. He would have definitely had a lot high level of knowledge. But the problem is that a lot of pastors don't have wisdom issues. They don't have wisdom to deal with just the general issues of counseling. I've met some pastors who have just been had a passion for counseling. And oftentimes they'll have a wisdom gift. Other pastors will look at them and say, well, they, you know, they don't have that scholarly weight that I have. They're still valuable because your church might be suffering from bad marriages. Guess what fixes that? Wisdom. Your church might be suffering from bad parenting. Guess what fixes that? Wisdom. Your church might be suffering from the issues of today. Guess what addresses that? wisdom does but there's more gifts than just knowledge and wisdom they're discernment i've seen pastors who have had strong discernment and because they're able to see the heart of issues they address them a little bit differently i've seen pastors who've had a prophetic gift i know it's controversial in some senses to define prophecy but the truth of the matter is that it shouldn't be that controversial what is prophecy prophecy is speaking under the influences of a spirit so what is godly prophecy? Speaking under the influences of the Holy Spirit. When you say to pastor, ooh, he, those words came from the Holy Spirit, and you say, man, he almost became a different man on stage, most likely that pastor has a prophetic gift. We don't have enough of that. So we push knowledge to the exclusion of these other gifts, and that hurts the pastorate, and that hurts the churches. Here's a third one. Too heavy a focus on Paul and not enough Old Testament prophets. Now, this has a little bit to do with number two. But the truth of the matter is that a lot of pastors are because they are knowledge based and they know how to go from X to Y thinking. In other words, straight line thinking. They kind of have a little bit of a problem when it comes to something like First John that thinks in a circle. If you look at First John, it's constantly moving in this cycle. It's not necessarily moving in a straight line argument like the book of Romans or the book of Hebrews does. So when you look at a prophet, a prophet like Ezekiel, he will use an illustration to go to a point, to go to a point that reflects off of all these different things. It's almost like he his point is a rock dropped in a pond and then the ripples that flow from it. So a lot of times pastors will get into Paul and they're afraid to get into these other books. What happens when you do that? You get an un, uh, you get let's say this. 
If you went through all the books, you would have a well-rounded faith. So what happens when you don't go through all the books? You have an unbalanced faith. You have people who know a lot, but maybe not know the power of God. That's what you get from the prophets. You get the power of God. Or if you go through the law, you will get the structure or the wrath of God. Or if you go through the Psalms, you will get the emotion or the passion of God. All these different things point out different aspects about God that are true. And if you overemphasize one section in the Bible over another, you will have a problem. Here's the fourth problem with the modern pastor, afraid to offend. <sighs> if I preach the gospel, I will naturally have to say that homosexuality is a sin. I will naturally have to say that transsexualism and a transgender movement is a bunch of bunk. I will have to say that if I preach the gospel as it is interpreted in the Bible. That offends people. If I say the way that a marriage should be is a man should be the leader and the woman should submit to the man. Some people will be offended. If I say you need to go home and spank your kids. And if you don't spank your kids, you're not raising them in the way the Bible intends you to. Some people will be offended. Too dang bad. But the problem with the modern pastor is he feels that pressure. He doesn't want to offend. A lot of times he doesn't want to offend because he feels his paycheck is a tie to keeping people in there. He feels that the pastor is a popularity contest where he holds people's attention as long as he can to guarantee his own paycheck. And that's not the purpose of it. Sometimes you will offend. Now, here's a problem. Some people go out of their way to offend. You shouldn't be doing that. But where the Bible offends, it offends. Where it doesn't offend, it doesn't offend. Where it makes friends, it makes friends. Where it makes enemies, it makes enemies. And you simply have to teach it as it is. Here's the fifth reason. It's related to number four, but it is very relevant in the society that we have now. Afraid to tell women no. I've met pastors who they'll be teaching about the word and they'll say this and this and this. And some man will say something and they'll be like, yeah, no, that's not the truth. And a woman will say something. They'll, uh, 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 Right. They start stuttering and doing gyrating and, and twitching. And, and you get the feeling that they don't want to tell women no, because they don't. Right? Why don't they want to tell women no? Because a lot of women will be emotional in their response to a no. And they don't want to deal with that. A lot of these pastors, they haven't been. And let's just talk about it. A lot of pastors, they haven't. They coat. How can I say this? If your pastor is the type of guy who wasn't popular with the opposite sex when he was younger, in some sense, he might be uncomfortable dealing with women later on in life. And if he is the type that was popular with women, then he will face the catastrophe of being kicked out of the ministry if he is too good dealing with women and he deals with women and now they start to love him and now he falls into that temptation. So a lot of people will go the whole opposite way and they're afraid to deal with women. One is because they feel that they'll be dealing with temptation. Let's just put it this way. When you are empowered, that's attractive to some women. It just is. And when you preach, you will develop some sense of char charisma. S most pastors have some charisma. The best ones have a lot of charisma. And when you have all that charisma, you dealing with women. And, and it's just a difficult thing for some pastors. But for others, it's simply an issue of power and, and, and structure. They have a hard time dealing with women. Mainly because in their cultures, in our cultures, telling women no is seen as way more offensive than telling a man no. So if a woman says something, a lot of times people say, well, you know, you'll never tell your wife no. I always tell them, what you mean? I tell my wife no all the time. And the reason I tell my wife no is because I tell anybody no when I don't want to do something. Um, I tell her no because I'm in charge, not the other way around. I have to say no simply to substantiate my own leadership. There's stuff I just won't do. No matter how much I love my wife, there's things I won't do. There's things that people in the church will have to say to me and I have to tell them no. A pastor has to be able to say no, including to women. And some women, because they've been babied by this, right? Because society has pushed women in this fashion. What happens is women have become spoiled. And what happens to people who become, become spoiled? They react badly to when they're told no. It's just a fact. So a lot of women are spoiled and a lot of women will say, will react badly when they're told no. And a lot of guys, they know this, so they don't want to tell women no. Well, you got to get over that because women are sinful just like men are sinful. You got to deal with reality. So as a pastor, you can't be afraid of that. Here's the sixth problem with a lot of minor pastors. 
they get so deep that they teach like on two verses on a Sunday. Now, I have seen this done well, but most of the times I've seen it done badly. You teach on just the smallest section because you got such a deep thing to say. And a lot of people get frustrated because they feel like they're not going anywhere with that passage or that series. I um, mean, a lot of pastors don't understand the frustration because they so, so much love the word that they don't get it. And you have to convince your people to love the word as much as you do. And that's an ongoing struggle. For most people, they will never love the word as much as a regular pastor loves it because that pastor is literally dealing with that word all day. He loves that word. You can kind of think of it as somebody who welds metal. If they really love metal, there's somebody who works with horses. If they really love horses, they're going to be good at their job. A pastor who loves the word of God is going to be good handling the word of God. But you can never expect everybody else to love it as much as you do. And so you can never expect everybody else to get as much of a small chunk of it as you will. Here's the eighth one. One problem with modern pastors is that they try one way and they don't try varied approaches. And what I mean by this is to the word of God. When you look at somebody like Isaiah, this is a dude who had a very long prophetic career spanning over 60 years. And when you look at how many different ways he approached God's word, some through illustration, some with his son, some with his wife, some with um, these visually provoking, some with these sexual images, some with songs, some with narrative, some historical. There's many different approaches in the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah is one of the best examples because he is so varied in his approaches. But he's a great example of somebody who literally served for over 60 years. And so one approach is not going to work for just 60 whole years. So you got to you got to change it up sometimes. I met a pastor, a, a guy that I deeply love. And what he did was when he was teaching on a passage that had to do with sexual immorality, he brought a chair on stage and he sat in that chair because he wanted to have the approach of a dad talking in a serious way with their kids. And that approach worked so well for that passage. Um, but it was something that he did uniquely. And he didn't do it every Sunday. But since he wanted to change his approach, it had changed how people received it. So you have to change a creative approach to the word. Here's the ninth problem with a modern church is they won't create a separation between themselves and others. A lot of pastors have too much group identification with the church. And there needs to be, while there does need to be uh, some of that, there needs to be a separation. So think about the, in the past, the there was more stark, but even now it's to a degree. The difference between a doctor and the rest of the staff or the primary surgeon and everybody else. There was this difference that they created where he created a separation between himself and the rest of the staff so that he could order the staff properly. A lot of pastors are too much in the weeds. Right. It kind of reminds me of in, in the army. If you look at an army, a general will oftentimes will not fraternize with his own soldiers. And the reason for that is simple. He has to create some level of detachment in order to give some orders that is needed in the church. There needs to be some of that. Now, it can go too far. But if you don't create some of it, then you will create the idea that you can never command. And sometimes you do need to command. And here's the last reason. Um, problem with the modern past is a little bit opposite of number nine is afraid to share power, afraid to go to war. Here's what now you might say, well, those two seem two different things, but they're not. When you are afraid to share power with other people in the church, what the reason that you're afraid is because you're afraid that if you give power to somebody else, they could take that power and rip up the church. And then when you rip up the church, now you got to go to war over those pieces of that church um, as a pastor. You have to not be afraid of sharing power when power needs to be shared. You're not afraid of delegating. You're not afraid of somebody else getting popular in the church. It has to be done if you want the church to grow. If you don't share power, then the church will only grow as far as your abilities to make it grow. But if you can make proper use of others, the church can expand and multiply itself way past your opportunity to serve it. So, hey, those are 10 problems with the modern pastor. Um, go ahead and subscribe or like the video if you agree with what we're saying here. Thank you.